online worship uh, this morning. Um, everything you need to follow this service is available online. Um, the bulletin as well as the prayer for um, spiritual communion can be found on our website as well as the church online platform if you happen to be uh, tuning in uh, to us uh, through that. Um, likewise, um, we are open for in-person worship uh, at present, um, so please uh, uh, register for uh, the service on Eventbrite or give our, our parish office a call um, uh, if you would like to attend. Um, that's at 1030 on Sunday mornings. Uh, so please, please join us. Um, uh, we are distributing Holy Communion, uh, so that is a, a wonderful blessing in the midst of this difficult time, isn't it? Uh, and so let us center ourselves today to worship God in spirit and in truth. <laughs> Good morning. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This morning, from the Gospel of Matthew, we hear these words from Jesus. 
Jesus teaches us to love God with all our heart and to love our neighbors as ourselves. That is what it means to be a Christian. So this morning, as we're going through this service, let's think about the ways in which we offer our love to God and we love our neighbors as ourselves. Now our neighbors are anyone who are around us. Our classmates, our teammates, our teachers, and even your parents. God teaches us to love them, to care for them, just as God has loved us. It isn't always easy to do, and sometimes we have to bite our tongue, but God calls us to do it anyways. So let's pray that we are given the gift and the ability to love our neighbors as ourselves. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we ask you to bless all the children and youth of this parish. We ask you to bless them at home, at school, and wherever they might be. We ask you to bless their families, their parents, their teachers, and their coaches. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. First Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God, who tests our heart. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with the words of flattery, nor with pretext for greed, nor did we speak praise from mortals, whether from you or from others though we might have made demands as apostles, as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse, ten tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinners in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed.
Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord God. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Over the past few months, one of the things I've missed the most is the regular celebration of Holy Eucharist Rite One. This liturgy, with its these and thous, is a direct descendant of the early Reformation liturgies composed by Thomas Cranmer way back in the 16th century. It is a beautiful expression of the Reformed Catholic faith that we hold as Anglicans and Episcopalians. For those of you who have attended a Rite One celebration of the Holy Eucharist or the old 1928 service, here or elsewhere, you know that the service begins with the summary of the law which is taken from this morning's Gospel of Matthew. It says, Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, with all thy heart, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. These words, hallowed by time and use, direct us to the center of our faith and bid us to follow the example of Christ, who is the very embodiment of both God's love for us as well as a perfect model of man's love for God and for neighbor. Jesus of Nazareth, as our creeds reminds us, is both God and true man. In him, the gap between God and humankind is bridged. The God who appeared in darkness as a pillar of fire or as smoke filling the sanctuary of the temple appears now as a human being. Because God has become human, the mysterious love of God has been made tangible. Jesus, who healed the lepers, who stooped to wash the feet of the disciples, and who offered his very life for us, is the perfect embodiment 
of what God's love looks like. Indeed, when we look to Jesus, we see the heart of God beating because of the love he has for us. God is love. And we know this because of the love Jesus demonstrated to us through his life, death, and resurrection. But Jesus is also human. He suffered pain. He wept because of the death of a friend. And he struggled with accepting God's will that he should suffer and die. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he begged God to save him from his betrayal and death. And when he died on the cross, he experienced loneliness and fear and rejection. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? He cried out as he gave his dying breath. Through Jesus' sacred humanity, we are given a perfect embodiment of what it means to love God <coughs> and to struggle with the meaning of God's love in a broken and sinful world. Loving God even for Jesus <coughs> is not easy. It is fraught with fear, disappointment, and sometimes loneliness. To love God does not mean that we're always tap dancing on a cloud like a Care Bear. If we expect that, we're going to be sorely disappointed. It means that we trust that God is with us even when we doubt that he is. Jesus exemplifies this. But as a human being, Jesus also embodies the love of neighbor that God expects of us. Look at the way Jesus strives to care for those who are suffering. He feeds those who are hungry. He embraces those in pain. And he defends those who have suffered injustice. On the day of his entry into Jerusalem, during the week of his passion and death, he turns the table of the money changers in the court of the temple because they were defrauding the poor and vulnerable who had come to worship and offer sacrifices of God. And they defrauded them with usurious interest rates. Jesus' love of neighbor not only includes acts of mercy and compassion, but also acts of justice. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. These words point us to Jesus, to his life and to his example. As Christians, our lives must be completely and radically reoriented toward Jesus. Just as Jesus embodies the love of God, we are to embody Jesus, even if imperfectly, to a world that sorely needs it. Right now, we are suffer suffering severely from a lack of love. <clears throat> lack of love for one another. In these days leading up to the election, 
we are seeing acts of political violence and intimidation. And I, for one, am afraid of what might come to pass in this country over the coming months. We have lost the capacity for civil discourse, and we no longer even trust that most people are acting in good faith. In our own parish, one of our members recently received a threatening letter from a neighbor regarding a political sign that happened to be in their yard. When did such things become acceptable? We as a people are treating each other with callous disregard. This is not the Christian path. Christian love, as expressed in this morning's gospel and perfectly embodied by Jesus, bids us to something deeper than our own tribal loyalties to political parties or even to nation. Christian love demands that we follow Christ's humble path of self-emptying love. We are to be gentle with one another, as St. Paul reminds us, caring for those who are suffering. And as broken people, all of us are suffering. Love, sisters and brothers, is the point of our very existence. And as Christians, we have a special vocation to embody God's love in the world and for the human community. The second century church father Tertullian, writing in the midst of Roman persecution, wrote about how some of the surrounding pagans admired the early Christian community. He wrote, See, see how they love one another for themselves are animated, are animated by mutual hatred, how they are ready to die for one another, for they themselves will sooner be put to death. In a world that is likewise animated by mutual hatred, of one another. Let us embody God's love that the, so that those around us can look upon us and say with admiration, see how they love one another. This is our vocation, and let us never stray from it. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Yes, I did.
the prayers of the people with all our heart and with all our mind let us pray to the lord saying lord have mercy for the peace from above for the loving kindness of god and for the salvation of our souls let us pray to the lord lord, lord have, have mercy for the peace of the world for the welfare of the holy church of god and for the unity of all peoples let us pray to the lord lord, lord have, have mercy for our bishop and for all the clergy and people let us pray to the lord lord, lord have mercy for our president for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority let us pray to the lord lord, lord have mercy for this city for every city and community and for those who live in them let us pray to the lord lord, lord have, have mercy for seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth let us pray to the lord lord, lord have mercy for the good earth which god has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it let us pray to the lord lord, lord have mercy for those who travel on land on water or in the air for those in mis missionary service especially michelle for those in military service especially david ryan robbie stephanie Anne marie eli lou john blake and bud let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for those who are celebrating a birthday and for those celebrating an anniversary and those traveling let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the aged and infirm for the widowed and orphans for the suffering and for the sick especially susie rick ruth jackie rudy lorraine carol linda clint sally frank bill and pat nelly Tommy, the McKinney family, Helen, Tina, Claudie, Tony, David, Clint, Scott, Christina, Sue, and Martha. For homebound members and for those we serve at Berea Healthcare. For the recovering of Russell, Joanne, John, Chris, Holly, Kira, and George. And for those who are caregivers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression and degradation let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses let us pray to the lord lord have mercy that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach let us pray to the lord lord have mercy Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Thomas, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. O oh God, who called your servant Alfred to an earthly throne, that he might advance to a heavenly kingdom, and give him zeal for your church and love for your people. Grant that we, inspired by his example and prayer, may remain steadfast in the work you have given us to do for the building up of your reign of love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way, the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of our joy and our gladness. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. I will wash my hands in innocency, O Lord, and so will I go to your altar that I may show the voice of thanksgiving. Tell of all your wondrous works. Mm -hmm. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and glory. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken to the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh of Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, from all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Joseph, blessed Thomas, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. <coughs> the gifts of God for the people of God. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly my own parish and those worshiping there, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings you have given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacraments, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray to you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. 